Suspense. And the producer of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, the master of mystery and adventure, William N. Robeson. The word license has two meanings. The first is familiar to all of us. Official permission, as in marriage license, liquor license, driving license. The second definition, paradoxically, means almost the opposite. Freedom from rules. We concern ourselves here with an esoteric aspect of this definition, namely dramatic license. In the forthcoming story, we have deviated somewhat from the facts and altered California topography ever so slightly in the interest of suspense. To the residents of San Bernardino, who may grumble, it couldn't happen that way, all we can say is, aren't you glad? Listen, listen then as Mr. William Bishop stars in Ride Down Cajon, which begins in just a moment. And now, Ride Down Cajon, starring Mr. William Bishop. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. There are two main gateways to California. Route 40 over Donna Pass in the north and Route 66 over Cajon Pass in the south. I don't know anything about Donna, but Cajon Pass, I know. You see... I'm night man at Ella's Tip Top Cafe at the summit of the pass. And I live down the hill in Badu. That's uh, San Bernardino. Down the hill. You drop 3,000 feet in 20 miles on a four-lane divided highway that's so well-designed drivers hit it like it was the Indianapolis Speedway. Which is okay if your wheels are working okay. If they're not, you can get killed on Cajon. Fast. By all rights, I should have been the other night. And I just went along for the ride. It was along about 2 a.m. and I was waiting for my relief man when Phil dropped in for a cup of coffee. Phil rides the pass for the highway patrol. He also is my uh, brother-in-law-to-be, seeing he's married to my girlfriend's sister. Don't forget, Andy, we're supposed to take the girls to the beach tomorrow afternoon. Don't worry, Joan. He's reminded me at least twice a day all week long. <laughs> what time do you want to get started? Uh, I'll be over as soon as I can get my car out of the garage. They promised it before noon. Oh, that's right. I forgot your car's tied up. How are you getting down the hill tonight? What do you care? You wouldn't give me a lift. Well, you know I can't. Regulations. Yeah, you might break a regulation or two. You're practically my brother-in-law. Andy, my boy, the only way you can ride that patrol car is to break the California vehicle code. Then I'll be glad to give you a lift. To jail. Thanks a lot. I'll hit your ride. Much action on the pass tonight? No, it's been pretty quiet. A couple of drunks, two or three speeders. No blood. That's good. That's the way I like it. Hiya, Phil. Oh, hi, Dave. How you doing, Andy? Okay, Dave. Hey, where'd you blow in from? Yeah. Colorado. And I could eat a horse. Uh, fresh out. How about a cow, medium well? I'll buy it. And a side of fried eggs. And a gallon of coffee. Coming right up. Andy's car is in the shop, Dave. He's looking for a ride down the hill tonight. Can you fix him up? For sure. Why not? Here's a starter on that gallon of coffee. No. Dave will give you a ride down the hill, Andy. Crazy. Providing you're ready by the time I finish eating. Oh, sure. I'm off in 20 minutes. Hey, Dave. What? Whatever you're carrying in that rig, it's leaking. Yeah, I know. Ice water. Ice water? You carrying a load of ice? No, no, no. Chickens. Chickens? All the way from Colorado? Sure. <laughs> Where do you think the Los Angeles housewife gets her fresh killed spring chickens? Colorado? Louisiana? Mississippi? No kidding. Sure. Ten, eleven days from the axe to the dinner table. Uh, aren't they a little spoiled by that time? No, no, they're okay to eat. They may have lost a vitamin or two on the way. <laughs> well, it's time to head down the pass. I gotta check in at the weighing station. I'll be too late tomorrow, Andy. Don't worry. I'll be there around noon. Take it easy, Phil. Yep. Never take it. <laughs> By the time Dave had eaten his steak and eggs, my relief man had checked in, and I was through for the night. We walked out into the chill desert air. Route 66 stretched endlessly toward the east, marked only by the yellow pinprick of an approaching car. The melting ice water dripped steadily from Dave's loaded trailer. He walked slowly around the rig, as he always did before he started her up, checking the connections with the tractor, the running lights, taking in every detail, seeing things only an expert can see. He was so serious about it, I nearly laughed. <laughs> Think she'll make it? If everything holds together. Doesn't it always? It always has. So far. 
Dave swung into the cab and fired up the big diesel. I clambered him after him, and he nosed his big ten tons of refrigerated chickens out onto the westbound lane to Highway 66. He ran her through the gears, and when we got up to speed, it finally was quiet enough to talk without yelling at each other. When are you and Joni going to do it? Sooner the better. She wants to be a June bride. So it'll be June. Yeah, I guess so. Where are you going on your honeymoon? Joni's talking about Frisco, so I guess that's where it'll be. <laughs> Boy, she's got you roped and hogtied already. Uh-uh. Joni and me, we, we talk everything over first and come to an agreement so there won't be any arguments. So long as it's the way Joni wants it? Maybe it looks that way to you, but it isn't that way. I know. Margie and me had the same kind of talks. But that's as far as it ever got. Talk. It's different with Joni and me. For sure it is. If every guy didn't think it was different, there wouldn't be no more marriages. Tell me something, Andy. Honest. What? If you could pull out, if you could keep right on going tonight, on into L.A. and down to San Pedro, and get on a slow boat to China and never come back, wouldn't you? Of course not. Joni and I are in love. That's not what I'm talking about. But on the level, Andy, aren't you a little scared? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so, a little. I didn't like Dave talking that way. I knew he was only kidding me, but it was like he was reading my mind. How did he know that that was exactly how I felt? Scared of getting married and guilty because I felt that way. Our lights picked up a sign on the right. Summit Cajon Pass, elevation 4,301 feet. This is the spot where the truck jockeys down ship so they can ride down the pass on compression and take the load off their brakes. Dave threw out his clutch, shifted to neutral, tramped on the brake pedal, oh, no. and it went right down to the floorboard. He tried it again, and again. Nothing. No brakes. What are you going to do? Try to get her to gear. No go. I can't get the gears to mesh. Grab that horn, pull over your head, and keep her going. Okay. It don't work, Dave. Oh, I forgot it's an air horn. We got air brakes. We got no air pressure for the brakes. We got nothing for the horn. What do we do now? Hang on to ride. We're loaded good and heavy. That'll make us roll faster. Maybe it'll keep us from dipping over. What's this handle? The spotlight? Yeah, on the roof. Turn it on. You want me to work it? Won't hurt any. Play it back and forth. Maybe you'll get the road clear for us. We were picking up speed all the time since we nosed over the top of the pass. We went into that first big wide curve below the summit like a Maserati at Seabury. Tight on the left, then drifting across both lanes to the outside fence and back to the right. Coming out at better than 70 miles an hour. Fangio couldn't have done better than Dave did on that one. But what about the next one and the ones after that? Tighter turns, not so well banked. And the traffic, there was bound to be traffic. After we got out of that curve, I could see the car way down the road. I kept it from being on my spotlight, flicking it back and forth. And in no time, we were up on it. Dave pulled one hand off the wheels of the electric horn button. But he didn't hold it long because he needed both hands to keep the truck on the road. The guy in the car must have got that message because he pulled way over on the shoulder. We made it past him just before we went into the next curve. We came out of that one at 75. But a slight dip and an incline slowed us down a little. Then we came over the top. My heart stopped. A half mile down the road were two cars, one in each lane. Neither one was giving way to the other. Put your lane on the left one. We'll need that lane to make it. I kept my light in his back window, but he didn't move. Dave hit the horn. Still, the moving roadblock didn't break. We were getting closer. Why wouldn't they move? Why wouldn't they move? Get over! Get over! I can read the license plates clearly now. Too clearly. Colorful Colorado, New Mexico, land of enchantment. Why didn't they move? The distance was closing. 20 yards, 15, 10. Why don't they move? Five yards now. Get over! Get over! moment, we continue with the second act of Suspense. And now, starring Mr. William Bishop, act two of Ride Down Cajon. We were not more than four feet from him when colorful Colorado got the idea. With a gust of black smoke from his tailpipe, he pulled ahead of New Mexico, land of enchantment, and we barreled by with nothing to spare. It was like a bad dream. Like one of those dreams of falling, falling, or flying an aeroplane between skyscrapers, or, or riding down Cajon Pass in a runaway truck. I knew that next curve. 
Just last week, I stopped there to see what was left of a truck that had gone through the guardrail. The truck half the size of ours. There was nothing to do. Nothing. Hold your breath, shut your eyes, and pray if you remember how. You can breathe again. You can open your eyes. You're not in a flaming heap in the bottom of the canyon. You're still alive. You're still hurtling down the pass at a mile a minute with no brakes. Andy! Yeah? Didn't Phil say he was going to check in at the weighing station? Yeah, I think he did. Think he'd still be there? I don't know. Maybe. I'm going over to the right lane. Weighing station's just over the next rise. If he's still there, maybe he can help us. How? How do I know? There he is. He's just getting in his car. Get on that spotlight. Flash it in his eyes. You only got one chance. Yell at him. Wave at him when we pass. Hey, Phil! Yeah, he must have thought we were clowning. He just waved back. Don't sound like it. No, his red lights are on. He's coming after us. At the speed we were going, it seemed to take forever to Phil to catch up to us. Dave slowly, carefully edged the swaying rig over in the left lane so Phil could pass on my side of the cab. We were barreling down a straight stretch of the pass now, where the eastbound lane was only separated by a divider. The big trucks climbing the grade kept flashing their lights, signaling to us to dim ours. But Dave couldn't fool with a dimmer switch and handle the wheel, too. So he had to take the angry glares full in his eyes. Finally, Phil drew up alongside us. What's the matter with you guys? Lost our air, no brakes. Can't he get her into gear? Try to. She's rolling too fast. Okay. I'll clear the way for you. Phil floored the gas pedal and pulled out in front. Sirens screaming, red lights flashing. And I breathed once more. Riding parallel like that at 60 plus with that trailer slewing behind us, anything could have happened. Well, that's something. What? With Phil out there, we don't have any traffic problems. And we don't have any brakes either. What else says no? With Phil out front, I didn't have to work the spotlight anymore. I set it straight ahead so Dave wouldn't be in any danger of overdriving his headlights. I could see in the Phil's patrol car. He was talking into his radio mic. He's calling in, Dave. I don't know what good that'll do. Well, maybe somebody will figure out how to stop this thing. Too late for that. What do you mean? We ought to have escape ramps on this road like they have on the ridge road. Where'd they put them? You got the eastbound lane on one side, the canyon on the other. Yeah. I looked out, down into the canyon. Dark, black. Then far down, I saw the twin lights of a double-headed diesel crawling up the pass with a load of freight. The road ahead seemed straight and level. But that train reminded me what a grade it really was. Two engines pulling, and at the tail, another pushing. Crawling up the pass at ten miles an hour while we shot down at a mile a minute. After the right would turn off, we had another long curve. Almost a 90-degree turn, long and gradual. But at this speed, it'll be tough. My tires always screeched when I came through it, and I had brakes. There was nothing for me to do now that the spotlight was set dead center. So I just sat there while Dave did all the work. Sweat dripping off his forehead as we went into the curb. His arms straining at the wheel, turning it a little, then easing off, turning it again, coaxing that crazy rig through with every part of it. Came out of that one, almost at right angles to the road. The trailer in the right lane, the tractor in the left. But we came out of it. But best of all, there was a little grade ahead of us that slowed us down. And then beyond, the road was straight for a long, long time past the firehouse, and the light of creek cut off, and then it's still downhill, but much more gradual. And then you're out of the canyon, and the desert stretches flat on both sides of the road. Hey, Dave, how about pulling up on the shoulder now? Too soft, we flipped for sure. I thought of the road ahead, all downhill. We'd lose speed, all right, but would we lose it quick enough to do us any good? There comes a time when you just can't keep going straight. The road ends. <laughs> In a moment, we continue with the third act of Suspense. And now, starring Mr. William Bishop, act three of Ride Down Cajon. Our speed was down to 53 as we topped the last rise. Far ahead, way past the fire station, I saw a red light flash on and begin to move. Another patrol car. Phil's got reinforcements, but I don't know what good they'll do. We rode on and on, all the time going faster. 
Our 53 was back to 60, 65. And as we hit the bottom of the pass and on into the dew, we were doing better than 70. Also, as we hit the dew, we were joined by a fourth in our parade. But this member wasn't as encouraging as the rest. He followed us with his siren blaring. It was an ambulance. Have you ever driven through a fairly large town at 70 miles an hour? It's quite an experience. Up ahead, I saw the first police car ride over a dip and bob up and down like a teeter-totter. There's something I hadn't thought of. Hold on to your head, Andy. This dip may send you through the roof. The dip was bad, but it slowed us a little. And so did the next one. And the next. As we approached the bridge over the railroad yard, they got worse, and the creaking of the couple between the cab and trailer screamed more each time. The dip on the bridge did it. It was a sudden surge. The cab beat the head. There was a jerk, a horrible noise. The trailer came loose! It's going over the railing onto the tracks. Well, at least now we don't have to worry about that load landing on top of us. Up ahead, Phil had seen what had happened. We were both in the left lane, and then Phil moved to the right, stuck his arm out the window, waved us on. Wonder what he wants. Looks like he wants us to come alongside. Yeah. Phil slowed down, and when we got alongside him, I leaned out the window. Got an idea. I'll pull ahead of you. You weak enemy. If we can connect at the same speed, I may be able to stop you with my brakes. You hear him, Dave? Yeah. What do you think? Right, boys. We got to do something pretty quick. This road ends. got out ahead of us by about five yards and stayed there for half a block. Then he slowed down. He's going too slow! That's Still too slow. We pushed him away. And look at his rear end. Here we go again. He almost got it. Just a little faster this time, Phil, and we won't push you away. Here he comes again. We did it. I think it may work, Andy. More, we smashed into the rear of the patrol car, and each time we slowed a little more. And the third time we connected and stayed connected. And Phil's brakes held us and brought us to a slowing stop. Less than half a block from where the street ends. We crawled down from the cab. Phil got out of the patrol car, and we just stood there, shaking, looking at the smashed up rear of the patrol car and the smoking brake drums. And then I, I started laughing. I couldn't help it. It struck me as funny. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> I just thought of something. <laughs> well, let us in on it. We could all use a laugh. Do you know why my car's in the shop? I'll buy it. Why? To have the brakes relined. <laughs> William Bishop starred in William N. Robeson's production of Ride Down Cajon, written by John Mahler and adapted for suspense by Mr. Robeson and Mr. Mahler. In just a moment, the names of the supporting players and a word about next week's story of suspense. Supporting William Bishop in Ride Down Cajon were Bill Quinn and Joe DeSantis with sound patterns by Bill James and Tom Hanley. Listen. Listen again next week when we return with Elliot Reed in Four of a Kind. Another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. of the news, which follows immediately on the CBS radio network.